The police response to the protests in Ferguson, Missouri over the shooting death of Michael Brown came in two very different forms. One was more militarized, featuring local police using heavy body armor, rubber bullets, and tear gas. Another approach featured uniformed state police who marched alongside crowds. Both approaches borrow from the past. The history of U.S. police crowd control tactics over the last 100 years can be divided up into four eras. The Second Industrial Revolution and the rise of labor disputes saw a surge in police and public confrontations. In the early 20th century, U.S. police had no strategy or training for crowd confrontations. That often resulted in violence. After 1919, tear gas was introduced to help quell crowds, but police departments still lacked more formal tactics. The Mid-Century Between 1950 and 1970, the rise of the civil rights movement and anti-war protests compelled police departments to create crowd control divisions. Police became better equipped and implemented new tactics. These included water cannons, mounted police, and dogs. But many were rapidly abandoned due to the number of injuries to protesters. In this period, police officers typically wore only helmets and carried batons. A shift took place in the 1980s and 90s when police adopted a more militarized style. Police forces began training at military bases, thinking that borrowing from the military's well-honed tactics could improve civilian enforcement. The gear changed too, and included a less toxic form of tear gas, grenade launchers for tear gas, shields, armored cars, and sniper rifles that shot rubber bullets. In the mid-90s, federal grant programs led to the dissemination of surplus military equipment to some police forces. And finally, the war on terror and the emphasis on homeland security led to widespread national access to military equipment. More small and mid-sized police forces could procure the same kind of more militarized gear that large urban areas had.